Okay guys, welcome back. This is game number three between Virtus Pro and Absolute Legends in the Premier League Season 3. Both teams tied up one or what a match. First match, unfortunately, Absolute Legends getting stomped. And then game number two, turning it around with a tiny wisp combo. And to boot an invoker playing the game of his life, insta-giving everybody left runs. In fact, not so much everybody, more just picking on poor old Windrunner. As the saying goes, everybody hates gingers, have got no souls, and Voker just kicking the crap out of Windrunner every time he saw her, instantly picking her up with the Yules and sending up Meteors and Sunstrikes left, right, and center. So we'll go into this game though. We've got Linnea being first banned by Absolute Legends. In, looks like we've also had Virtus Pro ban off the Darks here. Still a very calm ban. I'm kind of expecting Naga Siren to get banned out as well. Very few teams are letting her slip through. It will actually be. The Shrak being banned first by L, I guess they're comfortable with that just because they do have the first pick. Rubik, the next banned by Virtus Pro, they're more worried about him. And what will we see for Absolute Legends? Will they go for the Naga Siren first pick? Will they go, you know what? Let's just let her slip through because we do know she can be dealt with. That said, not just because you can deal with her, does it mean you want to? Because, of course, she's a very, very frustrating hero to play against. But now the double pick for Virtus Pro. This is not looking good for them at all. Just so many good heroes have slipped through this time because we've had a couple of respect bans here. Of course, we've had the Linnea. The Shrek is an interesting choice. He does get banned every now and then, but he doesn't get banned that frequently anymore. And he often does still get picked up, though. Linnea, though, being banned out, it looks like absolutely we're more worried about that. They did also... We've also got the Lycan left. A lot of teams have not been picking Lycan at all. But the question, if they don't pick, you see, the thing is, if they don't pick, uh, if they don't pick the Naga Siren, they leave it on the board for Absolute Legends. Now, the question is, they may not want to use Naga Siren. We've seen Virtus Pro; they've been going for very aggressive lineups. They may, may not be happy with picking up Naga Siren because she tends to sort of want to stall the game and go further towards the late game. So, just because, just because of this, they may have to pick her up and then play with her because they may not want them. Absolute Legends, because the second pick going in, Absolute Legends, you know, Naga Siren, and then followed up with an Enigma. And if you've got Siren, Enigma, and Tidehunter all on the one team, you're just asking for an absolute disaster to happen. So this may completely mess up their draft. Definitely very worried for them right now. But Virtus Pro, they are really taking... I think this is they're somewhat stumped. They are definitely taking their time on this pick. Time. They decided, you know what, let's grab up the Brewmaster. Also going to grab up Disrupt. Now, this is what I have heard that this is a decent way to deal with Naga Sara, is the fact that as the, as she, you have Disrupt to hang a fair way back, and as she comes in, you let her come and do a song, but as the next hero comes in, whether it be the Tidehunter or the Enigma, you glimpse them and send them way back downfield and keep them out of trouble. So we'll see if they can make that happen. But I've, I've been told that this is something that the, some of the Southeast Asian teams do do to deal with the Naga picks. It looks like AL have said, you know what? That Invoker worked so well last game. Let's do it again. They've managed to snap that up now. And we saw exactly how powerful that was in the hands of Sony. Sony absolutely devastating all of his opponents with some really fast nukes there. A third pick, though, for Absolute Legend. What will they go for here? It depends how they want to run this Titan, whether or not it's going to be a support or, or a farming hero. And it will be the Enigma. So we've got the Tide Hunter and the Enigma as well. If Virtus Pro aren't going to pick up Naga Siren here, they definitely want to ban her, because I really feel if you let Invoker, Enigma, and Tide Hunter get a perfect lineup on it. Like, we saw exactly how devastating Invoker was. Now, imagine if you gave him seven seconds to get into position. That could be utterly disgusting. Radiant team ban. Now, prior to 6.75, Brewmaster was a really good counter to Enigma because his Primal Split was not affected by the Black Hole. That said, they are now. They are now affected by Black Hole, so you can no longer just hit Primal Split and then run around in Black Hole with complete impunity and then laugh at Enigma as you throw a rock in his face and stun him. As it is now, Brewmaster has to be extremely careful also about being caught out by that. On the same side, though, he now also dispels uh, Smoker Deceit, so there's no more of that, I'm going to go and gank you, and then they smoke, pop the Smoker Deceit and run away. That is always very frustrating for a Brewmaster. The next band, though, by AL, they decide to get rid of the Enchantress. Virtus Pro also pick up the Beastmaster. I appreciate this as well, just because they need some long-range power stuns to make sure they can shut down Enigma. And Beastmaster will make sure that they have that superior magic stun to cut through a BKB that Enigma may rush. We saw last match as well, Enigma was trying to rush himself a BKB. And there we go, Virtus Pro wisely get rid of that Naga Siren. 
I think Absolute Legends are probably okay with that though. They've got their foot because even without Siren, even without Siren, they've got a really powerful lineup there in the form of Tidehunter with his Ravage, and then you follow that up with a Black Hole, and that is just that can be utterly disgusting. Invoker as well can line up his spells off that and cause complete and utter devastation. You get a Black Hole and a couple of heroes and throw a Meteor through them. Well, we saw exactly how devastating that could be. Queen of Pain though, the next ban, Bael, just trying to get rid of some of those mobile. Annoying Nuka heroes that can just get in and burst a hero like Invoker down. And now we need these fourth band from Virtus Pro. They decide to get rid of the Wisp. I think they, I think they're a little sour about that tiny Wisp combo from last match. Absolute Legends did do some extreme carnage with that, and mostly it just came down to the mobility the Wisp was giving Tiny, allowing him to just jump all over the map and cause absolute, absolute carnage, just tear heroes apart left, right, and center. In this case, even if they get Tiny now, he just won't have that global mobility. Honestly, though, I do prefer the t uh, the Wisp and the CK combo. I think it's honestly a bit more reliable and a bit more powerful overall. It doesn't push quite as well, but at the same time, it's more reliable just because CK is still really good with his ultimate without Wisp having to tether up. Because with Tiny and Wisp, if you don't have Wisp overcharging Tiny, it becomes a very lackluster. Uh, the uh, Arganims without n lots of attack speed items becomes very, very lackluster. The fifth and final ban for Absolute Legends, though. What will they pick up here? Their opponents have one of this. The opponents could use the support hero here. They could also... Actually, Brewmaster could be the solo mid. Although, last match, we did see him farming the hard lane. It was actually AL. Not last match. Uh, the match before. It was farming that hard lane against the Bounty Hunter. Absolute Legends, though, are going to take their time on this final ban here. Really want to think this one through. And they pick off the Chen. Okay, so they are somewhat worried about that pushback. Also, just Chen is all round and extremely strong here. The attrition value he brings to a fight is really powerful. And the thing is, when you've got sort of this nuke combo that you want to get a whole bunch of spells out, you don't really... One of the things Chen can do, basically, if you get a pipe, you get the mech, you get Hand of God, it will allow them to basically just survive the burst combo. So I think it is definitely a good idea to get rid of Chen, especially since Chen can do that from a good distance away as well. The fourth and final, or the fifth and final band there for Virtus Pro, they do pick off the Lone Draw. I find that interesting that they decide to pick off the Lone Draw. Honestly, don't, haven't really been seeing him being used all that effectively as of late. He definitely, when a team manages to get him farmed quickly, he's definitely very powerful. It's just, I think it comes down to the fact he works better against a lineup that is farming for the late game. Against a lineup that is going for lots of firepower in the early mid game, I find that they just tend to lose a lot of towers quickly. Lone Druid just doesn't find room to farm, and then it just goes really, really sour really quickly. That said, though, of course, we did see uh, during the International Absolute Legends play against DK. DK got crushed in the early game. Unfortunately, AL then made a few mistakes, gave some room to DK to farm, and unfortunately, the Lone Druid came out and stomped Absolute Legends in the late game in the end. Raster, though, the next pick for Absolute Legends. Of course, I'm, when I say Absolute Legends, and that particular Absolute Legends was the previous team that is now known as Natural 9 once again. Nature's Prophet, the fourth pick for Virtus Pro. I haven't been seeing him that frequently, but they've got a lot of mobility in the form of Nature's Prophet now. Can do a little bit of pushing here and there. Just cry and cause some trouble. And this is not a bad idea, honestly. If Absolute Legends, you see they've got plenty of team fight potential. It looks like they're going for lots of big team fight potential there. Although they could split push quite easily themselves. But Nature's Prophet is also going to get them plenty of split push. So if Absolute Legends try to death ball it up, just go on a group of five, pub train it, and just try and take down tower after tower, pushing together as a group. Nature's Prophet can try and abuse that and just push other towers while they're busy. I am a little bit... I don't think it'll be that effective, though, just because they will have Enigma who can split push himself along with Shadow Shaman. They can just sort of split up and push different lanes, look after different lanes. Clink's also the final pick for Ale, Ale though. Okay, it looks like Ale are just going to try and cause a bit of trouble. They might even throw... No, it looks like Shadow Shaman and Titan will probably be supporting the Clinks. Enigma Suicide Soloing and then Invoker at the Solar Mid. Just because Sony was so damn effective last match with an Invoker, I think they'll probably give him the mid again. They could, if they wanted to, throw Invoker in the Suicide Solo lane. That is definitely a possibility. Throw Clinks in the mid and then have Enigma jungle and then have uh, Titan being farmed and su then supported by Rasta. Also a possibility, but I think just because how well Sony played last match, they're probably going to do a similar lineup to the last time in that regard. The next and final pick for Virtus Pro, I'm just looking at the light, they really... Disruptor probably going to be the hard sport, Nature's Prophet could Faceless take up the slack, void. and it's going to be Faceless Void! That is an interesting decision, they do have a lot 
I do have a fair amount of uh, disable there. If Basis Void can set up a good ult, a uh, good uh, Chronosphere there, they could quite easily follow up Disruptor. He can throw down his trap, get a whole bunch of heroes in that, and then throw in his ult to follow up and trap a whole bunch of heroes in that, plus his one. We've seen how powerful that was. Completely shuts heroes down. And of course, you've got Brewmaster as well, can cause a lot of trouble with his ultimates. They've got a lot of CC there. That is definitely looking quite scary. But at the same time, I mean, I'm really, really worried. Also, Void it can be shut down by Clinks if he gets that Orchid. The damage amp is very, very scary. Anyway, so let's call out the players here. Alright, so playing for Absolute Legends on the Radiant side, we've got Come With Me playing Shadow Shaman, BBB playing the Clinks, Freezer on the Tide, Hunter Mania playing Enigma, and Sony once again on that Invoker. Playing for Virtus Pro on the Dire, we have KSI on Nature's Prophet, Ammon playing the Faceless Boy, Crazy playing Brewmas uh, Brewmaster, Amadeus Mozart playing the Beastmaster, the two BMs. And then NS playing Disruptor once again. Now Moscow, I've, I've seen a lot, like I've seen Moscow 5 pretty much insta-ban. Insta-ban the Disruptor against NS every single damn time they play against him. So, you know what? I'm a little bit scared about that, but as we saw last match, it can be dealt with. I see a five-man sweep here from AL. They have been scattered out though, the trance spawning this up here. And Faceless Void and Disruptor know there's trouble up here and probably won't get stuck in. Brewmaster's going to be soloing mid. Beastmaster... I'm going to be heading to the bottom lane. I think he'll just be doing the whole stack the ancients with his axis trick. What is nature's prophet? Uh, nature's prophet will be jungle. It looks like he's just going to try and ward in the enemy jungle. Just try and get some line of sight in there for the beastmaster. But interestingly, oh, she, beastmaster's already done it. This is something he does. He goes down here, cuts down the trees, and then goes back to fill up his mana pool. Yeah, he's already done that. And then he'll head over, head over here to stack these ancients, and he'll clean them up later. So even if he's under a lot of pressure in this lane, which to be honest. It uh, looks like he won't be under that much unless... Oh wait, Raster is going bottom, so yes, he will be under pressure. As we see, Enigma is going... Oh, he's even been pulled to clarity there. Looks like Enigma will be jungling in this case. Didn't quite expect that, but here we go. That's what it'll be. And Tidehunter will be soloing this top lane. This is going to be slightly rough for him. Going to be up against Thrall as well as... As well as Faceless Void. That can be somewhat difficult. You see Raster just running around there. It looks like he's going to head to bottom right now. Beastmaster is just going to try and catch any CS that he can before he gets harassed too badly by an extra support hero. This lane definitely has the potential to knock down an early tower if it wants to. If Enigma jumps out with Eyelons, they could quite easily tear through a tower very quickly. Of course, Shadow Shaman can also nuke down a wave as it looks like he's going to come from behind. He's got Shackles up as well. We see that Clink's trying to harass as much as possible. It looks like, come with me, he will get the Shackle down. He goes for the Shackle, and there's the Sunstrike as well to boot. Can they get enough damage? Couple more hits, there's Searing Arrows. It's not quite enough, and Beastmaster will walk away with a sliver of health, counting his lucky stars indeed. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Tidehunter copying a bit of damage there from Faceless Void. But as it is, the support's not really showing up, and it will just be tied under 1v1ing Void for the most part. Anchor Smash actually proving to be problematic for Void. A, he loses a fair bit of damage from each hit, plus getting hit in the face by an Anchor Smash repeatedly is not that much fun. Disruptor, on the other hand, focusing on pulling and denying experience. Let's see Brewmaster, though. Seeing four. Give me two. I'm going to bring up the wrong one repeatedly. Buyback status. Give me the freaking CS. GPM, there we go. So it's 493 for the Brewmaster at the moment. And CS right now, it looks like Enigma is doing the best, although obviously he jungles at an extremely rapid rate. He's very hard to... He gets out of control pretty quickly if you don't go in there and gank him and shut him down. Again, Sony going for the same build as last time. Again, the Sunstrike leveled up, so he can just reach out and touch anybody. All these lanes, they need to be worried about overextending and or town diving. Invis Rune being popped by somebody. Who was it? Ah, Shadow Shaman popping an Invis Rune, although not finding anything. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet looks like they're going for the gank on top. There we go, the slow from Time Walk there. Another anchor smash. This should be an easy kill, though. Great block there. Are they going to get in? They turn around. He pops their health bot, and he's going to walk away. All three heroes backed up, said, you know what, we got him. We got him. Backed up for a second, then realized, holy crap, at their mistake. And Freezer knows it too, taunting them. Granted, though, he did pop that health bot. Quick fingers with the health bot did actually save his life as well. That one tick was enough to keep him alive. But at the same time, still, that should have been a kill. They should not have backed up until they were dead sure he was dead. Meanwhile, Raster just hiding himself there. He's looking for another kill attempt there on... Beastmaster. Beastmaster being quite cautious knows this could be trouble now. He comes a little bit too close. No, he won't come that close. Raster decides not to jump out. 
And Disruptor still focusing on denying that with the creep balls. Their faceless void picks up. Looks like he might be going for a battle fury. Has picked up a ring of health there as well. See so a 21 and 1. This is could be a bit of a problem. You see 21 and 1 for Enigma. 20 and 21 and 7 there for Clinks as well. Void on the other hand, 17 and 5 has been not doing quite as well against Titan. Titan, of course, can look after himself in lane 1v1 with a melee hero. Meanwhile, in mid, though, it's pretty much neck and neck for Brewmaster and Invoker. Brewmaster, of course, with the early bottle, will just be spamming the Thunderclap. Doesn't need to watch out for the auto attack harass from Invoker, though, plus the Cold Snap is always painful if he decides to use that. We see Brewmaster now trying to cut off Invoker from the 4 minute rune. As it looks like there's a gank attempt on top. Can they land this kill for a change? Sunstrike's coming in. It will manage to land, but it looks like he's going to turn around. Goes for the kill. But finally, they take down the Tide Hunter, who's manning up. And this time, it is NS who pops the taunting smiley face there. Brewmaster, though, did he find the rune? I don't think he did. And Freeza responding, well played. Let's see, Beastmaster, though. I think he's spam I think he's spamming wild axe. Actually, I think it might be possible someone threw down some blocks there. Doesn't seem to have as many creep there as I would have expected for nearly at the five minute mark. Well, Mania's still fun. Well, he's got his soul ring done and dusted. He's got smoke there for a gank if he needs to go. I think Brewmaster may have got the room. Again, the sports just pulling it around. On the thing there. Tide Hunter though mostly just trying to jack this creep wave. Both teams playing relatively passive. Of course, AL they won't try and move all that much just yet. They do have the ability to reach out and touch people with the Sun Strike. And mostly they're just gonna be waiting for Clink. I think Clink's just is gonna try and get that fast orchid if at all possible. In fact, there's his first Oblivion Star coming out right now. It's about Clink's. How much money is he sitting on? It's about 2.2k away from his Orchid. If he can get that up and running in the next 5-6 five, uh, five, minutes, that is definitely going to get quite scary. And he could even just basically jump in behind Brewmaster. I mean, shut him down. Make sure he can't Primal Split. This could be very painful indeed. See Brewmaster, one level of Drunk Ball. We see that Sunstrike coming. Doesn't hit anything though. I think Sony was possibly trying to bait him in. Meanwhile, there's the ultimate there from Faces Void. Doing a lot of damage with the Bash proc there. And three heroes wailing away. And unfortunately, they did not manage to stumble into that ult. Void actually placing that correctly. Allowing them enough room to auto attack from out of range. Will seal them another kill on Titan. And honestly, there's not a lot Titan can do about that lane now that they've got their ults up and running. It's a very painful lane to be in. Brewmaster now looking for a rune. And it looks like Enigma has stolen. In fact, Enigma sitting here picks it up. Will walk straight into Beastmaster, harass him a little bit. I think he was hoping to swing in behind him and go for a gank there. Beastmaster now going to scout out. Now scouting out with a hawk. I think it's only level one. Yes, he has actually picked up an early level of Inner Beast. This is something I see the Chinese teams do a lot. Actually, they get that early level of Inner Beast just to help them. That's because it's actually pretty effective push, especially when you got a few minions. Not bad at all. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. See, Faceless Boy has finished up Power Treads. So not to rush the hell out of a battlefield, if indeed that's what he was going for. He might just be holding on to the Ring of Health just for laning phase. May decide to go something else entirely. Now Mania, just pushing in here, just trying to keep this creep away from the tower so they can push this with ease. The Eidolon is just doing that job of them, tanking the creep wave for them. This should be a fairly easy tower. Now, meanwhile, there's a bit of a gank in middle. Looks like Invoker's trying to get away. Didn't really do enough damage to him, and they don't have any counter in this tech. Invoker will be able to escape this. Bottom tower goes down, though. Radiant should be able to catch up a little bit off that tower. Let's bring up the overall gold you see here. Just dump, jumps back in favor of the Radiant after that tower kill. Experience wise, though, still pretty much neck and neck. You see a bash there rocking on freeze. Do we have an ultimate up? No, we don't have it up. Now the 15 second plus no mana for it. Meanwhile, though, Absolute Legends are completely happy to continue pushing, and this is one of the downsides of having that Invoker and Faceless Void, as well as Furion. None of these heroes can really come and assist the Beastmaster. Invoker still needs to level up. Faceless Void is obviously a hard carry, and Furion, this early in the game, cannot act as a frontline hero. And with only a level 4 Beastmaster to back him up, he is more the Force Multiplier than the actual Force himself. So against this lineup, it is very easy for Absolute Legends to abuse and just abuse it and just push outlying towers very easily without having to worry too much about backup showing up to defend against them. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. See, B Brewmaster has picked up a haste room, bottled that up. Could look for a gank here. 
So he looks like they're just going to dive all the way and actually go straight for Beastmaster. And like I said, they can not afford to do this as Mania very low. Nature's Wrath, though, comes screaming in and takes him out. Can we see a Sunstrike here? I think they know he's there. It looks like... Oh, Vigos was looking for it. I think he's trying to find him. Vigos, though... Trying to help him out there. Brewmaster pops the hastry. Oh, look at that juke, but he's been spotted. Brewmaster is going to run another juke, but the Thunderclap is having none of that. Easy mode kill there. As Vigos does manage to walk away from it. Just barely. But I said they wouldn't really have a whole lot to respond with. And as it was, they really didn't. But the big turning factor there was obviously Nature's Prophet managing to get an ult in there. They really didn't expect that. I see a glimpse, though, being used to send... <laughs> Being used to send Mania back. Teleport back at the landing, and get sent back immediately. Unfortunate for him. Come with me now, trying to defend this lane all by himself. Still in level 4, he actually needs to be careful. A Chronosphere could end him indeed. Furion also showing him. In fact, if he kills these trees, come with me. Could be in a lot of trouble, but we'll reveal him. Come with me also still does not have those certain wars. Reinforcements are arriving with the Radiant Team. No Mania is here. Does have the Black Hole up. So helps the Malefus. There's the Hex as well. Shackles. Black Hole. This is a bit of a miscommunication. Unnecessary amount of uh, CC stacking indeed. Radiant and unfortunately Glimpse not up stolen. to save his life. Void being picked up there. Frustrating kill. It looks like he's picked up a Perseverance. We'll be going for that Battle Fury. Death Pack being used there by Clinks. Clinks now working on his second Oblivion stuff. He's definitely getting close at all. Could ha well have it within the next three minutes. He's got the two most expensive arts. He's actually only about 300 gold away, and then he'll have it. Now, Absolute Legend's just going to continue pushing here. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Top Easy push for them. They're going to keep charging. Though here comes the ultimate you know, teleport in here. It looks like he's going to face the Gets hex straight away. Great hex there. And now he pops the ultimate down, but catches mostly of his team. This is not a great ultimate from it at all. However, it's not going to matter too much. Glint's being used there. Clink's being brought back in. Thunderclap in once again. Dust being popped as well. Not a fantastically placed ult, but in the end, did not really matter all that much. They get three kills out of it. And it looks like Virtus Bro can continue to counterattack, although they've decided they've already taken that tower, so they're just going to let Void go straight back to farming. And Brewmaster, it looks like yeah, he's got 700 gold in the bank. Question is, will he go for. No. Urn's already been picked up there by Nature's Prophet, just going for cheap little items. The question is, will uh, Brewmaster decide to go for. Will he decide to go for the uh, Aura Master, or will he decide to blink, pick up a Blink Dagger to help initiate? To be honest, so far at the moment, it looks like Faceless Void is initiating okay, but I think as the game goes on, they really want to stop having him being the first one in, just because he's getting a little bit too easy to pick off. Especially once Clinks finishes up this Orchid. See, Clinks is doing a lot of damage to wards that are currently mostly attacking Creep. A lot of damage being done there to Clinks. Clinks, so needs to be careful. Do they have a Dust? They don't have a Dust. Nature's Prophet comes in. He's going to spawn some trees as well. Going to try and clean up these Serpent Wards. Stun goes down there. Glint's being used to pull Raster out of position. And then will manage to trap him in there with the Kinetic Wall. A Sunstrike comes in though. Critical damage to Anessa. Cold Snap as well. Finishes him off. And now we've got the Offensive Urn being thrown down on Invoker. Dust being popped there by the Dire Side as well. Spawning Invoker. Can't Ghost Walk out of this. He doesn't actually have an Invoke up at the moment either way. Anyway, he will be possibly run down. He know he will manage to escape the looks of things. Nature's Wrath doing a lot of energy. He won't escape though. Great roar there from Beastmaster. The ward's spotting it up, allowing him to roar him over the top of the cliff. And Clink's now still wandering about, looking to see if there's anybody he can pick off. Doesn't look like it. Beastmaster having already teleported home to base. Clink's just going to death pack and eat up what he can. He is about 500 gold shy, finishing that Orchid now. If he had an Orchid right now, he could kill KSI. Freezer now just gonna keep farming there. They're just gonna keep the pressure on him mid and they can keep doing this. Got plenty of push here. Of course, Searing Iris does do damage to the tower. Furion though, gonna bring over his own creep to defend against this push, and it looks like Enigma will have to settle with just farming a little bit. That will be stalled right there. As the moment dust gets popped. Looks like that was a sort of offensive dust looking there for the clinks. Not really doing a whole lot though. As you see the shackles go down, he will be finished off though by the treants of all things. And now Beastmaster though getting picked off by clinks. Wall goes down and will actually manage to crap clinks. But it looks like it's mostly just to make sure that NS can get the hell out of there without being picked off. 
I think Clinks is okay with that. They did manage to pick up a kill there. It looks like they're going to chase out Fury on Fury on though, putting himself beside the trees. Sunstrike coming in. It looks like he will get picked up there by Yules. There's the Meteor. The Chaos Meteor doing critical damage. Clinks also will pick him off as well. A couple of auto attacks. So Searing Arrow is doing so much damage. And Burion actually buy him back. He's got a hand of Midas. He's feeling kind of rich there. Still the chase goes on. Enigma is moving in after the Brewmaster. And now we've got NS there. Will that decide? Actually, no, this invisibility room is keeping him safe. Although he hasn't got long left. He may actually pop up in the danger zone at the moment. He will pop in. Throws down the stun. Actually turns around. Tries to run. And we see a glimpse, it was a mistake, and he gets trapped inside the wall there. They will get hit by a Thunderclap, and that's an easy kill of Mania, although he pops down the black hole, immediately gets cancelled there by the NS, dropping the Thunderclap. I mentioned to get the silence off there, Sony now in some serious trouble, Wild Axe as well, the Roar as well on top of him, but he is a little bit too speedy. Wex as well as Phase Boots, on top of that, the Yules, and he throws down the Yules, and we're going to see a Sunstrike, Chaos Media coming as well, no, just a Sunstrike, and the Chaos Media not arriving, it was a Deafening Blast, it's dead. There goes the ultimate for Void, once again, catching two heroes in it. And Void now getting the hell out of there. Ravage gets popped off by Titan. Not doing a whole lot though. Primal Split is still up there. They want to go. Thunderclap goes down. The Freezer is dead. Now we've got Vigos trying to run. Although Vigos turns around and guns for it. But there are four heroes here. He can't really afford to fight. And it looks like this tower will get taken out. Clinks may just try and deny this and then skedaddle. So the Void is just going to teleport out though. I don't think Clinks can slot and deny. It won't happen. They will get the tower kill here. This is not going too well. That looks like he's got his orchid. Looks for a kill there on Furion. Doesn't happen. Mostly just annoys Furion more than anything else. Clink so has rushed the orchid so fast, did not even bother to stop for boots. It's actually something that does happen with Clink somewhat, just because he's pretty damn speedy with his wind walk anyway. I think they're saying gank the jungle right now. I think they want to try and shut down this Furion, make sure he doesn't farm his way out of control. He has got dust there to help gank with the clinks. Of course, he can shop at any point in time. They need that dust and deliver it. Disruptor also does have a gem. This will help out against clinks. Also, it's just going to be downright useful for getting some map control. In fact, speaking of map control, I'm pretty sure they've already gone around and counter ward all of the Radiant Wards just because I can't see any of them around here. And I find it rather unusual for there to be in no wards up at all. Now we've got the clinks going to go forward and scout. Now he's going to have to stop doing this because of the gem. Jim is going to cause him some serious grief if he keeps doing things like that. He's going to have to make sure he hangs back. The push is on in mid though. We've got Serpent, uh, Serpent Wards are still down. Ravage is also down. No Black Hollow. This could be problematic. They see the Nature's Wrath come through. The Hex goes down there on top of the Brewmaster. He's going to try and take out the Raster though. See Yules go in on top of the, this, uh, top of the Disruptor. Gets hit there by the Chaos Media. Throws down his own ult. Does a lot of damage and he will just barely get away. The counter-attack is coming, Ghost Wall, though. Ice Wall gets popped down there as well, going to slow them down. The slow is quite painful, Glimpse are going to drag Clinks back in. Invoker is down as well, Thunderclap going to finish him off. And Clinks is dead as well, there is a triple kill. As it looks like, Mania was possibly the only one to survive there, unless he brought back. No, it looks like he was the only one to get away, and that's just about it. Unfortunately... Forcing that fight from the Radiant side was a huge mistake. They had none of their big ults up. No Black Hole. No Ravage. They didn't even have Serpent Wards up at the time. Definitely a critical mistake there. And they ended up regretting forcing that 5 minute 5 fight. I, just, I mean, they're already behind on kills. I think they're, they're already behind experience, kills, gold, and then they force a 5v5 with no ults. Definitely a big mistake. They paid the price for it. Sunstrike going to come in. They're not going to do enough at all. Tynan does have Ravage, but he's going to be feeding it. Looks like he's going to feed another kill. He's going to try and set this up. Here comes the stun. There's the Ravage to set this up. We've got Serpent Wars down as well. Here comes a counter attack. Great counter ult there from Boy. Going to take out the Tidehunter. Can he take out Raz as well? If he can get a bash here, he will be set. Gets stunned there by the Enigma. He still doesn't have Black Hole up. It looks like the Aegis is going to pop it. Clinks is going to town there. Fury on Fury on gets taken out. Void is back up. And now Clink's being taken out of the fight there by the Storm Panda. Can they pick him off as well? Burion is not available to pop dust. And it looks like it doesn't matter though. Will Clink's get away? Clink's has managed to pop the Wind Walk and now it looks like Invoker will be their target of choice. A Bash Prox in. Ghost Walk is not quick enough. And they take out the Invoker as well. I've got to say, for Virtus Pro that was definitely a decent trade indeed. I think they can be quite happy. They're sure they lost the Aegis, but it's not a big deal at all. Got a whole bunch of kills that they needed and tied. Unfortunately, being way too aggressive there. Forcing another fight. It looked good, but unfortunately, still no black hole being used in that fight. That could have been the thing that they needed to change it. 
And Boyd, they're not shutting down for long enough, and he turns the fight around with a nice big ultimate there. Clink so finds Boyd and picks him off because it's exactly how annoying that Orchid is. Boyd unfortunately getting stuck and not able to run away. Looks like they're going to try and pick up the Clink. So Nature's Wrath also coming in causing critical damage. Can we see a dust? No, he will get away. Necromnik in level one, and no dust. In fact, Nature's Prophet has already used up all of his dust charges. Looks like Enigma is trying to build a mechasm for his team. Clink's now just finishing off Power Treads. I see Invoker once he got that. Oh, he's got the recipe for a four star. Probably just bought that before he got taken out during the fight. Radiant bottom tower is under attack. See, there are 12k experience there. That is definitely crippling at the moment. 4k plus gold lead. Not too bad. Could be a lot worse. But definitely the experience lead at this point in time is what's really, really slamming the Radiant team. You see that that's kind of. As that is damn painful, you see that Tide City on 0 6, 0 and 4 there for Mania. They just have not been getting the kills down. That's really what they wanted. That's so. That said, though. That said, as we can see, GPM wise, Clinks could be doing a lot worse. In fact, he's staying relatively close to 400 GPM. Unfortunately, the issue is the Void is just free farming. In fact, he's gone for Helm of the Dominator, and he's also picked up a Battle Fury in the meantime as well. Double damage rune. Looks like he's going to try and pick somebody up here. And he damn, he well could pick up anybody. He decides, tries, decides to jump in on top of Tyna. There's the blink. The thunderclap as well. Easy kill on Tidehunter. And you see that the radio team immediately run for their lives. They say, uh oh, we don't want to deal with that. And they're going to have to run and hide. Looks like Furon's going to scout there. The teleport out. Wise move there from Enigma as well as Sony. So you know what? Let's get the hell out of here. We're going to get scattered and routed. Brumas already going in to check things out. The ports have come up top though. Raster is here along with Clink's Blinks in. There's the Thunderclap. Gets Hexo. Do we have any follow up? Serpent Wars gets thrown a shackle as well. There's the silence from the Disruptor. Nicely played. Unfortunately, Brumaster is down already. Fury on though. Gonna pick off the poor. Gonna pick off poor old uh, Raster there. As also Clink's also getting slammed as well. The Raw gonna pick down. Pick off the Clink's. They've got a gem as well. Nowhere for him to run and hide. We see Beastmaster with his nukes as well. Too much for Clink's to handle. And the mobility right now, Furion showing up just behind them, quite powerful indeed. Got his second level in Necromnikan, looking for his third. I sprout anew. Faceless Void. 1500 gold in the bank, there we go, they're going to throw the Yules there, going to go for the combo, gets interrupted, or doesn't quite get interrupted, NS possibly going to die to the Chaos Meteor, or not quite, he gets him over the sliver of health once again, absolutely ridiculous, gets healed up in the end though, they get the kill there on Invoker, Void going to continue farming, going to continue chasing rather, going to try and farm these heroes if he can, I hear a black hole somewhere, I swear I hear a black hole. Yes, there is a black hole in that mess. Black hole has indeed been popped. There is also a midnight pulse down as well. Mania is trying to clean up these two heroes, but does he have any follow-up? It doesn't look like it. His follow-up is Freezer, and Freezer, he's only level 8. He's nowhere near them. He's got a level 1 Ravage. He's trying to run down NS, who has actually... I don't know if he's realized, but he's actually been, he's actually been healed up. They popped the mech there. Beastmaster showed up and popped the mech just in time. And it looks like Mania is going to be wasting this black hole. And as soon as it ends, well, he's going to get jumped on by Void as well as Prophet, without a doubt. Unfortunately, well, Clinks is coming. Clinks is teleporting somewhere. Clinks is coming to the mid lane. Unfortunately, even with all of his speed, he's not going to get there before black hole ends. Invoke is dead. Where's it, Raster? Oh, actually, oh, okay, I lie. Raster is here. Doesn't have Serpent Wars, though. It does have a nuke. This is actually doable, then he could hex one while shackling the other, and also, of course, zapping them with Ethereal Shock as well. Definitely a possibility. If Tidehunter backs up, if they're communicating right now, Tidehunter backs up and then supports him, he has Ravage available as well. Raw is not up. They could quite easily get these two heroes down as well, possibly three if Beastmaster overcommits on them. It will buy enough time for Clinks to show up, so I think Mania should be fine, provided his teammates decide to help him out. Of course, his teammates could just run off and uh, leave him to die, which is always hilarious. Ty, though, is really hurting for mobility right now. He really wants to be able to get in and kick these fights off with a rabbit and just cannot get stuck in. Apparently there is a gem on the ground somewhere. Yes, Disruptor must have dropped it earlier. 
somewhere nobody managed to recover it. So Faceless Boy has managed to DC. This is the cause of our issues here. And you know, fair enough that they don't want to. <laughs> fair enough that they don't want to uh, unpause at the moment, just because Faceless Boy is about to get wailed on by three heroes, more than likely. Boy doesn't have his ult up. Just looking through there, there is a level one Necro, which isn't going to do that much. I think the main, the main, the main multiplier of this fight is going to be Titan of getting off the good ravage to gush the anchor smash on Void. They need to try and take out this Void before he can just leap away. Uh, I'm actually going to move away from the black hole because it's starting to get annoying that droning noise. You disrupt it definitely. Feeling, a, feeling the bite, feeling the pinch. Got a 7.5k gold advantage currently for the dire side, which is not surprising. They have been gaining a little bit harder, than, and of course, the experience gain is much larger. 14k advantage for them there as well. Look at the overall items. See if anybody's popped up anything interesting. Furion still with the minus. They still haven't finished his trades. Furion, in fact, has got how much money in the bank? He's very close to a level three necro. Only about 300 gold away from that. Of course, crazy with his blink day. It looks like he's going to go for Arganims next as well. Items, of course, very useful item there on the Brewmaster. Really makes his ultimate go to a whole new level of crazy. Why did they pick Clinks? I think they were hoping to cause enough trouble that Clinks could farm quietly in the corner and get off a... basically get some really good farm happening. Unfortunately, well, you know what? He, he's been doing okay. It's, it could have been a lot worse. Bring this up here. 386, it could have been a lot worse. The main issue is it just wasn't as good as Void. I mean, we've seen solo mid clinks just completely decimate teams just because they get the farm that they want. People support them, people gank their lane for them. And clinks, if he gets a fast orchid, he can tear people apart quite easily. And of course, he's got the mobility and of course, the invisibility as well allows him to get to places where people don't expect and often don't have wards ready to defend themselves. Alright, I'm going to sit over here to get as far away as possible from that black hole sound. We wait for this to pop back up. Still waiting. On who is it? Ammon, who's managed to DC. Hopefully, this doesn't take too long. Wait to look at the items. I was looking at something else. I am quite surprised by the Helm of the Dominator pick. Honestly, did not expect that all that much, just because it doesn't give, it doesn't give Void huge, huge buffs. I guess maybe in the late game, maybe he's hoping to get the Satanic. Let's see what he decided to do. We'll see what he decides to go with, though. Sorry for Ty. They got, I feel sorry for the Invoker. He got so close to taking out Ennis. Just got him in a sliver of health, and it was just not to be. Because Beastmaster arriving at a timely moment and popping that heal there as well with the mech. You can tell the chat what's going on. Virtus Pro is saying his PC is dead, but he restarted it already. Hopefully he comes back online in one to three minutes, so we might have a short wait here. Sadly, technical issues are difficult to avoid, of course. We had a fair share of technical issues from Twitch's end during, well, during the first night that I was casting. I might as well take this opportunity to plug our Facebook stuff. Also, guys, stick around. After this, uh, after this cast, I will, be take, I will be doing a short interview with a member of the winning team. So if you want to ask some questions, I will be fielding questions from the community in the chat there. So feel free to stick around for that. Also, I will be giving away some beta keys. You will need to follow the Facebook, like the Facebook and that. That'll do, uh, that will allow you to enter. And I will also be giving away a key on stream as well to one of the people who have followed us here. 
So make sure you stick around in the Twitch chat as well and hit those like buttons, hit those follow buttons. It will definitely help you out. I'll show you where you can go to follow the Facebook. If you bring up the Premier League .eu, you can see right here, the Premier League .eu, there'll be a tab on the side there. It's very nice. It's all nice and convenient and you can basically sign up and like us there. And of course, you know the drill. To, you know the drill to like us, or rather, not so much like us, follow us on Twitch. It does help us out quite a bit. Also, my name is Triumphant Man on Twitter. You can follow me there as well, and I will keep you updated on all the stuff I'm doing, especially you know when we're going live, stuff like that. And if you want to watch this in game, you can always buy a ticket. That also does help us out quite a bit. It supports the Premier League directly, and allows us to put on a bigger and better show each and every time. Of course, this is season three. Hopefully, just the hopefully, just another of many to come. All right, Void is here. It's apparently, Void's face was just smashed. Anyways, here we go. Everybody's saying ready. And the question is, will Tide get back here in time? Tide, though, actually going to stick with it, trying to get back to the Boris slowing him down. And here we go, Rask coming and gets the Hex down, but it looks like there he goes. going to pop the Ravage, not really going to do enough, though. Void now getting Hex. The Necronic is still doing a lot of damage. Void, though, getting picked off by Klings, who does arrive in time. Thunderclap in. Are we going to see a Primal split here? Doesn't look like it just yet. They're going to try and pick off Mania, perhaps. Crazy now getting Hex. Once again, the Ether Shock. An uphill miss, saving Nature's Prophet's life. A primal split there being Hex. Raw goes down. Clinks. Clinks about to get punched. Not Clinks. That's Raster there getting picked off in a second. Clinks is still out. Still mobile. I've lost track of Clinks. He's still around here somewhere. Clinks is actually speeding off into the jungle looking for trouble. Doesn't actually. Does not want to get into this. But it looks like the Dire did manage to come out ahead there. Unfortunately, Tide Under did not get back in time. Got cut off by that fort, by that kinetic wall as well as the Boar Slow, prevented him from getting back in range. Void did get picked off in the end, but they probably took more. More pure DPS than they wanted and less CC just allowing them to pin him down for longer. And Virtus Pro going to take this time to continue pushing in the mid lane here. Going to take down the second tier tower. Burion also rocking up to continue pushing. Level 2 Necro is done. Level 3 Necro will be finished as soon as this tower goes. If it goes down, come with me here. Didn't get to pop Plague Wars. Look at that. Bales Meteor perfectly landed. Hits three heroes. Two heroes are dead. Likely to lose the third here. Crazy in some serious trouble. About to get hit by that Orchid. He's going to get picked off. There's a couple of Searing Arrows. The damage jam should finish him. A couple of auto attacks and down he goes. A Hex Arrow as well. Three kills. That could not have been a better kill. Chaos Meteor, Sony, saving the day, saving the tower. Absolute legends with a kind of turnaround that they really needed there. Quite badly indeed. So we see a mech, has, I'm pretty sure I saw a mech, yeah, Enigma with a mech now. I see Tyner with a few odd little items. Voker now, four stuff as well as Yules is done, so he's got plenty of mobility on him. And Clinks now with an early gem, Orchid and Treads all done. All he need, I was going to say, you know what, he could do with a BKB, but then you've got to look at that line and consider, well, there are two ultimates that just go right through it. And we see here, we've got Void jump in there, he does get managed to get stunned there by Malifus, trying to take it, come with me, he's got enough time to throw on Sephiroth, great trap there, Chaos Meteor on top, of, on top of Void, great trap, great follow up, that could not have been done any better, they will also pick off the Beastmaster with the Cold Step, the wards are still chewing away on these heroes here, Void though manages to pick off Tidehunter. It doesn't matter though, he got off his spells in time, and now it looks like they're going to try and take out KSI here, although Raster teleporting out. Did he get hit by Glimpse there? No, he kind of... Disruptor is dead, what am I saying? Although it looks like Crazy's still in here fighting Mania. Mania has gone crazy, he decides to try and fight this hero by himself, no way he's going to survive this. Chuck a rock in his face, take him down with a burn. They lose the tower though, but lose a whole bunch of heroes in the process. Not a pleasant trade for them there. At the very least, they did kill Void and force a buyback from him, though, I do believe. You see a Cold Snap go down there. Furion taking a bit of damage. And yes, Void did have to buy back. That was probably quite painful for him. Shadow Shaman still saving up cash. I think he's just going to go straight for a Blink Dagger. Something I see the Chinese teams do a lot, just they go screw it and just buy Blink Davis the 4 star forward. It looks like Clinks is moving into this Yule's gonna try and set things up on Furion. The deafening blast is coming out a little bit too quick there, screwing up the Sunstrike Shackle down on Void though. That's a good ravage there. No, wait, he gets three heroes, doesn't quite hit Furion, doesn't matter though. Void gets taken out. They're gonna give chase, gonna try and pick off Disruptor. 
Disruptor now going to glimpse back the Invoker, making sure he can't get in there, but the Gush will finish him off there. And now they're going to try and run out. Crazy is still in the fight, though. Brewmaster is here, however. Primal Split is on cooldown. The Malphite is going to finish off. Pour off Fury on there. The Raw goes down. Sony instant trouble, taking a lot of damage from the minions. Four staffing away. Titan is still chasing. May have overextended. The Black Hole is up. Pops the Black Hole down. Do we have a follow-up? Yes, we do. It's in the name of Clinks. And Anchor smashes all. Mech gets popped, though. It might be enough to allow Beastmaster to get away. Their Orchid gets popped on top of Brewmaster. Brewmaster now trying to juke in. And he's managed to hide. No, he hasn't. They've seen him in there. Throws down another Thunderclap, but he will get finished off. Malphite plus the Hex. And the damage there from Clinks will bring him down. Khan is left, right, and center. We'll see how this turns out. Meanwhile, the Fury on pushing the top lane. We see that the Dire is managing to, well, the Radiant is managing to swing this gold back away from the Dire just a little bit. Experience also. Clinks, he's getting a little bit more farmed here. He's managed to pick up 1900 gold. I'm not sure what he's going to go for first. Whether or not he'll go for something defensive or something aggressive. Shadow Shaman, though, losing a lot of gold by the looks of things. Somebody just had something brought out. It looks like it was just Ward's poor Disruptor. Faceless Void now still doesn't have anything new. Pops down his ultimate just for Clinks there. And he's going to throw down the trap there. Can they throw in the Silence? Silence goes down as well. Easy enough to kill him. And of course, well, actually, they had the gem. I think they've lost it to somebody. Tide has also finished a blink. Looks like the gem was destroyed, as far as I can tell. Furion, though. How the level 3 Necro can spot him up easy enough. Roshan will be back in a moment also. And at this point in time, pretty much, uh, BP can just pick off Roshan whenever they want to. Of course, they can just have Void leap over into the pit from behind and have Furion teleport in. It'd be very hard to tell that they've gone in there. Beastmaster are still trying to get those items up. They're still falling behind quite badly. I think those last couple of fights have kind of crippled Void. He does not have... He's not had anything new in a little bit. And also... There we go. He will bring that down. But he hasn't also... He also doesn't have much in the bank either. 1,200 in the bank. Of course, he did have to spend on buyback. So, these last couple of fights have really annoyed him quite a bit, I would say. And now, just checking out. Still a minute there on the black hole. We've got Ravage level 2 up. And of course, Serpent Ward's ready to go as well. Looks like Absolute Legends are thinking about laying a trap, which is this is nice and all. Unfortunately, they can see you. Right about there and there. Has been denied. And there we go. There's an easy Roshan attempt for Virtus Pro once again. The Radiant not even bothering to contest. In fact, they probably don't even know what's happening. They don't have any vision down at the moment. Has fallen you can tell they don't because they're busy hiding in random places. Fury on now. 3.3k in the bank. I'm kind of expecting to go for a Hex next. Because you'd never have too many Hexes. Here's another Time Walk. Oh, it's just Void Farming. And Void also 2k in the bank. Question is, what will he go for? Mania now. It's doing a little bit of scouting with the Eidolons. Oh, can they pick up Void here? Void is probably seen. Void says, you know, you're not going to pick me up. I'm going to pick you off. And now we've got the Brewmaster jumps in, gets hit by a Hex straight away. Here comes a Shackle as well. A Ravage, that is a PGG style Ravage. That was not a fantastic one at all. We're all going to stop the Black Hole in its tracks. There's the Primal Split. And I think they're going to regret that Raw. I think they're going to regret that Black Hole as well as that. Oh, that Ravage was not a good Ravage at all. And now the Teleport for Rasta getting cut short. Rasta is a dead man walking. That's four heroes down. Only Clinks is left alive. And it's because he's wing walked out of there and disengaged. That was not... Uh, the Ravage it hit Fury on as well, but two heroes with a Ravage that size, and then you've got the Raw being thrown... And then you've got the Black Hole being thrown in without catching out Raw. That's just... Not not the best of plans. Virtus Pro shutting down that fight. Textbook. I've got to say, a great, refle uh, great reflexes from Raster. The second that Crazy popped in, he didn't even get a spell. Raster hexed him immediately. That was great finger work from him, unfortunately. Unfortunately for him, he did just get overpowered in the end because his own <laughs> teammates uh, did not play fantastically during that last fight. It looks like they're going to use this opportunity to try and take a Rax. Six seconds left on the Radiant Heroes from popping up, but unfortunately they don't have Black Hole, they don't have Ravage, they don't have Serpent Wards. I honestly don't think they can hold this. 
That's it, though. Their opponents are missing a bunch of spells, but they do have Roar up if they want to. They can just, they've got all these really cheap abilities that can try and pick people off. See, so Titan is just manning up, going up the front because he can. The Roar goes down. They're going to try and pick off Clinks. There we go. The ultimate getting thrown down by Disruptor. The Blink in by Brewmaster. Throws down the Thunderclub. So we'll try and pick off Clinks. It gets taken out there. Void now popping his ult. He's going to try and take out Invoker. Can he get him? He's using Yield to try and save his life there. Glint's being used to draw Invoker back. Invoker gets taken out. The Hex gets thrown down there from Fury. Oh, not Furion. From the Raster. Furion, though, getting ward trapped by Raster is his final breath. Furion should probably just hit the uh, wards there instead of doing anything else. As the buybacks are coming, it looks like Furion now gets shackled inside the wards, gets taken out. A blink in by Brewmaster. Changed mind. And now Void is actually going to get game move in there. That possibly changed mind. It only takes a lot of damage. Void now trying to farm the Serpent wards and possibly about to die a horrible, painful death. Oh, he's got an Aegis anyway, it doesn't matter. Void is back up, still 50 seconds of the ultimate, not that they're really taking it all that seriously. The top rack is there, they're saying sweep the mid one now. There we go, Void just sweeping this top rack because he can, there's nothing really to stop him right now, although then again, we've got Ravage up. Clinks is, oh, I think they've already called GG, Clinks is DC'd. Ah, uh, there we go, yep, they, I hope that was actually Virtus Pro calling premature GG, never mind. Absolute Legends haven't officially called GG yet, but Clinks has Rage Quit, so you know what, it's probably game over from them. Midrax gets taken out, easy push in, but oh man. It looked like that could have been so much better for AL, but unfortunately just the coordination this match, it was just not as good as last match, did not get that coordination down pat at all. And some slightly squandered opportunities, the GG's once again being called. Virtus Pro calling again, or...? No, there we go. AL calling it this time around. But definitely just some, just some uh, team fight potential squandered, and definitely some serious mistakes made. That de that pretty much a team wipe in mid. That was completely unnecessary. That should not have happened. Basically pushing with all your ultimates down, pushing for a five B fight with all your ults down. Not generally the way you want to do it. And I mean, they weren't even close, like, a lot of them were not even, the only one that was close to coming up was Raster's ult, and in the end didn't even really get that down in time either, so. Some questionable choices made, a couple of fights messed up, and in the end it all just stacked up and allowed VP to snowball out of control. But guys, this has been Tribe for Man, casting the, uh, uh, the Premier League Season 3. Now, after this match, I'm going to do a quick interview with uh, a member of Virtus Pro. We'll do a quick interview with someone from Virtus Pro and then I will be heading Victory. off to, and then I will do the key giveaway. I'll be giving a giveaway a key to someone in the Facebook that has liked the Facebook and I will also be messaging someone over Twitch in your private channel, in your private messages. I will be messaging one of our messaging one of our followers in Twitch as well. And you will get yourself a beta key. So make sure you follow us on the Twitch channel as well as liking us on Facebook for the best chance to win. Also a big shout out Two Steel Series as well as Twitch, they are our main sponsors for this tournament. Also, you can follow me on Triumph for Man on Twitter. Follow me there for any news and updates from mine. I will be telling you when I'm going live with stuff as well. Also, one final thing: if you want to check out the vods from this and you can't find them on the Premier League Twitch channel, you can also find them on our YouTube channel, Premier League on YouTube, right there. I will be also. It's also got a link to it on Reddit as well, so you better find it there, nice and easy. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you had some fun. I'll be back in about three, four minutes with an interview with someone from Virtus Pro. So stick around if you want to ask them some questions and find out exactly what their thoughts on the games were.